So, welcome back to the workbench everyone. This is going to be a vlog giving you all some updates on what's going on in my model railroading hobby. I'll show you some new additions to my HO scale collection, talk a little bit about some projects I've got going on, and also show you a recent bundle that I scored. But I think to begin with, we'll start by looking at some of the new additions. Now this Dash 8 is actually my newest edition, and I've been trying to get my hands on this for quite a few months now, but I got this on eBay. I think I paid $80 for it plus shipping. It's a Bachman Spectrum model, and I really like the Spectrum stuff just because of you know how detailed it is. It came second hand, but it is just a really nice looking locomotive, and I've actually got another one. I got this last year, I think, around the fall, uh, but it's obviously an older Spectrum model. It's not as uh, fine detailed, I guess, as the other one. And you can probably see that just by looking at the front end. You can see uh, the newest one I've got is a lot nicer. And because of that, I'm actually thinking of maybe selling my older Dash 8 and trying to get another one of these, but with the uh, Santa Fe on it instead. But like I mentioned, the detail on this is really nice. You've got the windshield wipers, grab handles, uh, little brake lines and such. Uh, the detail is pretty nice and you can even see through the vents right here which you can't on the older one. Uh, again, uh, quite happy to have this. I do need to replace the couplers because they're kind of damaged. Uh, planning on putting Katie's on here anyways. But uh, another something I noticed uh, with this unit compared to the older one, this has different lighting on it plus uh, the speed of this is a lot uh, smoother than that one there. So if I want to run these in tandem, uh, it probably makes sense to try to get another one of these and uh, not worry about that one. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't feel the price was too bad for this uh, second hand. In fact, I've been wanting to get my hands on these two Dash 8s for over 10 years now. I wanted these when I first got into the hobby, but the price was just too expensive at the time. But uh, these days, if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of fine detail and uh, what have you, you can pick up some of these secondhand models for uh, quite reasonable prices, especially compared to what your modern ready-to-run prices are. And some of you may know the modern ready-to-run prices are a big gripe of mine anymore. But like I said, though, again, really happy to have this Dash 8, especially after trying to acquire it for how many months now. Another new addition to my collection is the Bachman Daisy, and I actually got this from friend and fellow YouTuber Terrence the Tractor 525 back during our meetup on the 16th of August. Uh, apparently, he got another one of these for his HO collection, and he didn't need it anymore, so he you know just gifted it to me here. And I got to say, I'm really impressed with this model uh, for what it is. You know, I think Blockman did a really great job on Daisy. My only gripe with this, again, would have to be the silver windows. I'm sure some of you have probably heard me complain about that. I would have rather seen these either blacked out, or I know a lot of people would have liked to have seen Daisy have a, uh, you know, see-through windows. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. But, you know, it's really nice. You got all the uh, tail lamps on the back. Uh, the buffer beams look great as well. And only uh, one of the trucks is powered, uh, being the rear one. But uh, I'm planning to do a review on this here uh, at some point uh, in the near future, of course. I'm not going to be waiting like a year or something to do it. But uh, I figured the least I could do is uh, make a review video of this since uh, Christian was nice enough to just give this model to me. But, you know, it's really great to have this addition to my collection, and I'm looking forward to getting the chance to run this at some point. As mentioned earlier, I've also been working on projects, and one of the biggest things is I've been cleaning and servicing models for the Doolittles layout. And I've got a few pieces here that I'm currently working on, like this hopper car. It's pretty much ready to go, other than it needs some replacement couplers on it. The same thing can be said for this caboose, although a good cleaning would also help. And I think there's a lighting system in there that may need serviced. This caboose here, I've been working on putting the lighting back together in this. And again, another cleaning would help with that. And then there's this gondola, which it's got uh, quite a few issues. Uh, hopefully I can get this going in time as well. 
But then there's also this Hogwarts Express locomotive, and this was running on the Hogwarts layout at Doolittle's. This is the Bachman model, which has been discontinued for quite a while, and up until uh, the end of last year there, it started to have some running problems. And I think the issue is somewhere in the wheels or the valve gear, something's binding up and locking the locomotive. And I've taken this apart, I've cleaned it and serviced it, and I just, I can't get it to work. And in the meantime, Bob actually went out and got the Hornby set, which uh, that's running on the layout now, haven't had any issues. So I don't know what the fate's going to be for this locomotive. But as for the passenger cars that came with it, I think it's worth keeping these around at Doolittle's because like uh, earlier this year when YouTuber NZ Ardoon and I met up, he actually brought his Hornby Duck to run at Doolittle's. And uh, because he didn't have any rolling stock for him to pull, it was nice to have these coaches sitting around. And I think it'd be beneficial to uh, keep some other European stock at Doolittle's just for that very reason. Because, you know, there's people like me that go there just to run trains. And uh, if you don't have uh, compatible couplers for what you're running, it uh, might cause problems. But yeah, uh, planning to try and get a lot of this stuff uh, finished up back to Doolittle's. I've already taken one box full of stuff back that I cleaned and serviced, but I uh, guarantee there's probably a lot more there that could uh, be serviced as well. Another project I've had, which really is more of an issue, is I've been having problems running my GG1 model, which this is made by IHC, International Hobby Corporation. Uh, I think there might be some connection there with AHM, but I found that when I try to run this on the layout at Doolittle's, it just seems to want to move at a crawl, and if you have a consist behind it, it doesn't seem to want to move that consist. And I've tried it on my test track here at home and not had any issues with it running, but I'm kind of wondering if it might be the layout that's causing the problems, because I think Doolittle's layout is between 60 to 65 feet long, give or take, and it's being run with a simple starter set controller, which I noticed when I opened up this GG1, and I'll put up a photo here, you can see it's a pretty sizable mechanism. It's got two motors, two flywheels, and I'm kind of wondering if there's just not enough power being delivered to the track to uh, make this unit work. Uh, something else I noticed is the switcher units I got up the back here. If I run these on Doolittle's layout, uh, they don't really move that fast. And they've both got uh, big motors in them, uh, two flywheels each, and, uh, you know, again, probably a sizable mechanism. But I'm kind of wondering if the GG1 is suffering the same fate if, you know, the starter set controller uh, is probably nowhere near enough power for a layout like that. And, you know, by the time power gets around to the tracks where the GG1's at, there's just not uh, enough there to move it. But uh, if anyone might have any ideas what the problem is, uh, feel free to discuss down in the comments because, you know, I'm kind of uh, out of ideas, I guess. The last thing I wanted to look at is a bundle of trains that are recently picked up at the local Goodwill. And everything was in a bag for only $5, which I thought was really good because, I mean, personally, I think you got more than $5 worth of trains here. But condition isn't the best on this stuff. A lot of it's missing pieces and it's not complete. I will show a couple things, but everything here is lifelike, which that's kind of toy grade, so it's not really like a serious model train. I did quite like this caboose here, though, because it's got uh, the Red Caboose Motel and Restaurant on it uh, that's in Stroudsburg. I'm probably going to fix this up and add it to my collection. There was also this uh, Pennsylvania Tipper car, which this is actually made by Lionel. I think if you look on the bottom there, you can just see... It does say the Lionel Corporation, so I'd be tempted to fix that, add it to my collection. There was also this caboose and flat car. The flat car is Ravel, but I can't uh, figure out what the caboose is. It might be either Lionel or Ravel, not sure. Uh, all this here is Bachman stuff. Again, various conditions. Some of it's uh, too far gone, I think. But there was this uh, diesel locomotive, which... Uh, I'm not sure if this runs or not, but if it does, I'd be tempted to buy a new shell for this and uh, put it on this chassis, add it to my collection. But then there was also this Annie and Clarabelle from Bachman's Thomas line. Both of these are scratched up. Uh, Annie's in the better condition, but Clarabelle's got a broken coupler and buffer. Uh, I don't really have a use for those, but there was also this big 
bundle of uh, plastic train wheels and such. And I mean, these aren't the low grade wheels, but I think you got a small fortune just in these. And they'll come in handy because I can use these to fix up my stuff or even some of the stuff at Doolittle's, I guess. But uh, then there was also this uh, cheap gate piece. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, five bucks I don't think was a bad deal for all this. I can definitely use some of this stuff for parts or uh, trade material. And, you know, it'll definitely come in handy. So I think that's going to be it for this video. Just a little update on what's been going on with the model trains and such. And I would like to get back to Doolittle's here at some point and shoot some video there. I have actually been there recently, but just haven't been able to film anything. Uh, lack of time and what have you. And I mean, I've still got uh, some models that I want to run there and just haven't had the opportunity to do so either. But uh, here's hoping in the coming months things will start to slow down with my everyday life here and I can get back and have a little play. But anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, if you guys want to talk down in the comments, feel free to do so. Also check out my other pages, links in the description. And I will see you guys next time.